Good afternoon everyone. Um, joining you for Thrifty Thursday with this fabulous stash of goodies that I got from Facebook Marketplace. So I saw someone in the local area had posted what looked like a big stash of threads and laces and zips and buttons and all sorts of vintage haberdashery items that they were cleaning out from their grandmother's house. And they had them marked as um, free and then in the description it said make us an offer. So I had a, had a look at the pictures they'd posted and I thought yep I'll make an offer of $30 because I'm really interested in creating a vintage haberdashery slow stitch book where I can store so, all sorts of bits of vintage ephemera um, to do with haberdashery and, and sewing and I wanted to kind of get some more bits and pieces to add to that plus I could see from the picture that there were lots of threads including threads and colors that I didn't have so I thought that alone and then I also saw a bag that contained a whole lot of small buttons and to my eye they looked like mother of pearl buttons but I thought even if they're just little um, regular plasticky buttons they'll still be quite useful because I quite like the small pieces and then there was a massive um, stash of laces and a big stash of zips and various rickracks and other things all just in a big big pile so i thought yep i'm going to but i was particularly curious about the vintage haberdashery um, which was also yeah these ones pictured here and particularly curious about the the buttons so let me go through the stash um, bit by bit so we might start um, with the big jumble of, and I've just got it on a tray here for my ease of ease of use. So we have zips upon zips. So I haven't actually done that many crafts um, using zips. So I'm thinking I'm going to have some bits in my future um, of creating some little zipped craft bags or other little zipped goodies. Um, so they look to be new, new zips. Um, even though they're vintage, I think they still slide okay. I can always put a bit of graphite, a bit of pencil lead on them. Um, if I need to get them sliding, there's some big ones as well. Slides nicely. So lots and lots of zips. Also got bits of elastic as well, which can come in handy for things. Probably less for slow stitch projects, but for other other crafty projects. Some random bits like, like this. Just get all the sort of zips out of the mix and then we can have a look at the laces together. So I hope you're all having a great day when you're watching this Thursday, if you're watching it as part of Thrifty Thursday. So these are all the zips and elastics. Probably should be taking them separately, but I'll just put them together for now. Bit of um, hair elastic. More zips. Zips of all colours. Blues, tans, browns, greens. So if anyone needs any zips, um, particularly the ladies in ladies in Melbourne, um, and a call out as well, if you're in Melbourne and you're a slow stitcher, we've just created a little Facebook group where we can chat and probably plan some um, get-togethers, um, slow stitchy get-togethers in Melbourne, as well as sharing where we get our materials and other other interesting tidbits for those of us in the slow stitching. So I'll post a link. Um, to that Facebook group below if you want to join us. We're quite small at the moment. I think there's only about 11 or 12 of us um, But we would welcome anyone that wants to join us and, and talk all things slow stitchy with us So that is a very heavy bundle um, of zips So I don't know how much zips go for in haberdashery um, stores, but that's a very very decent bundle of those and then there's some nice bits of rickrack um, in colors that I don't have or sizes that I don't have so that's going to be a lovely complement for my rickrack collection including some white and some black and some blue and some more white so that's a very handy and a very decent sort of size. Um, you don't need that much when you're doing slow stitch projects. So it's a very, oops, and there's some more white there. So let's get it untangled. I haven't even had a chance to kind of go through this, this pile. I've been sorting through some of the other bits, um, but need to have a proper, proper sort. Then there's some lovely braid, and that's a decent, decent amount of that, that braid, vintage braid, woven braid. Almost got a sort of art deco feel to that. 
and then got little embroidered sections fold that one up keep that I keep that on my work desk I'm sure I can include in that in something soon there's a zip I'll put that over with my zip and elastics pile some random bits of fabric that's like an almost sort of leather feel or oh no more like that um curtain when they have the curtain in that's got almost a plasticky coating on it what's that in there nothing Just fold that up, put that with my fabrics. Over here. Little pom poms tied up with everything else. Gonna have to untangle those. Some cordage. Um, I won't go through all the laces now, but there's lots of nice little vintage laces in there. Beautiful little woven um, blue and white. Sweet little one here. Another one there. So these are all going to be great because they're just not huge, huge sections, but perfect for adding into slow stitch projects. So beautiful flowers. Oh, here's another piece of that embroidery. So yeah, I love mixed lots of um, laces and ribbons and all this. Um, there's another zip. Put that over with the zip stash. Some of it's gathered lace, but this one's beautiful with all sorts of little flowers and ribbon ribbon designs. Some broderie anglais. Some checkered ribbon. This one's got a really small little flower or cross design on it. Some sweet little ones down there with little yellow flowers. Is this a collar piece? I think this is a collar, so that's beautiful. I'm going to keep that one out. I might try and use that sooner rather than later. Maybe it can be a fence or something when I'm putting all my pieces of the Roxy Journal of Stitchery together. Some little sections of other laces. Some mint green lace. A sweet little section of broderie anglais. So lots to lots to trawl through there. Some more bits of elastics. I'll move those over with the elastics. So that will be super handy. Oops, I spot another zip. Um, and then that's almost an elastic, but you could actually just use that like a ribbon. It's got the sweetest little trim um, gathered along the side. And then this one, it's got some almost rust staining on it. But again, it could add some interesting textural elements. Some safety pins, I'll keep those out. So I'll move that off the table and let's then move on to our threads. So I think I'll just do the up ending. Oh, you can see there's a needle in one of those threads, so we will take the needle out. We'll have a look if it looks like it's rusty. No, it doesn't seem to be rusty. How does it go? No, it seems to go quite nicely through fabric, so we'll put it in our pin cushion. So I think this person, oh no, they are actually different purples. Those two look to be the same, but these are beautiful um, vintage wooden cotton reels, and they are marked J and P coats. It's in yards and meters. Cotton fast Mercer Mercerized cotton fast color in the colour 623 and can I read the writing that's on it? Made in Great Britain it says on it. So I'll have to research those. So it looks like some of them are in the same colour family. So the purple might have been a particularly favoured one but there's actually a few different purples. Thinking of Leanne from Leanne's Crafty Cupboard here. She's often into, into the purples. So if I have duplicates I might have to Send some of your way, Leanne. But I think this is just a regular sewing cotton, but I did have some loose pieces and as I was just winding them on, um, where did I put those ones? They felt um, really good quality, really strong, really good. They're just some of the little loose bits I found that I just put on one of my own bits of card um, and another one, including a thicker, more sort of crochet one. Didn't want to waste any of it. Um, so yeah, they're the more purples. 
lighter purple stash, some more purples into the mix, some more pinky purples, more purples, some pinks. Um, some of them are on these um, cardboard reels. Again, just feels lovely, really lovely and glossy. I think you can even see the, the sheen there. Hopefully it's not too dark in here either. I might even put the light on just because I've had to close the blinds because it's such a such a hot, sunny afternoon. So that's the pinks. More pink, a puce, puce sort of colour, Semco, Silket, Machine Twist, Boil Proof. I guess it, maybe that's when they were boiling the clothes as part of the washing process. So I think I'll find that these are quite old threads. I've looked at the dates on some of the other things um, in the collection and they're back in the sort of the early 1910s, 1900s. So um, yeah, definitely got some got some age in them and even just by the wooden the wooden reels which are nice nice in and of themselves. Um, a few more purpley colours and we've got some some blues. Nice navy. Again, it's just got that really beautiful sheen to it. Um, then we've got yeah, some greens. So I'm going to have to wind some of these on. Some of them are getting a bit loose. There's another green. Got some browns. almost a purpley colour as well. Got some blacks in there, there's some more browns, any purples. It's always interesting to see the, the colours in a collection. And then the yellowy golds, oranges, purples, and then I oh know that one's a brown. That's almost a brownie I think as well, brownie black. Um, some actual blacky ones, some grey and some white. This white is Coats and it is Sheen, Super Sheen, made in Australia. So that's pretty interesting to have it made in Australia back when we actually had a manufacturing industry. This little reel is gorgeous. Hem in, hem in Way Silks, Watertown Con, some Connecticut, yeah, USA, made in USA. How lovely is that? And it's just got the most sheeny little, doesn't look like there's a lot left on that. That one's definitely going in the haberdashery, stitchery um, fabric journal. So a few bits of loose thread. So that's um, the threads. So a really decent sized container of that. And that came with a cute little, a cute little lid. Then what next? Then we have our vintage haberdashery goodies. So got some lovely um, old pins, I guess nappy pins you'd call them. So I'll keep those out. Um, and then let's have a look at what we've got in each of these little bags. I think these are all the same, but there's um, a lot of them. I think, oh no, they're all different sizes. So we've got size, okay. now we have to have a sort of them. They're different. A size zero, a size zero zero. Hang on, I'll keep it on camera. Zero zero zero. Got a couple of those. Some zero zeros. All slightly different sizes. Size one. Size one. Size one. Size one. Zero zero. Oops. Nope. Zero. Zero. So it's such fun when you get a lot um, like this because yeah you don't quite know what you're getting but you can be in for some wonderful wonderful surprises like I was with this one so yeah that's quite the the stash and I figure these ones can go be um, put in little pockets in my um, slow stitch vintage haberdashery journal that's that bag of them and I think I looked um, these ones up and I think they were from, actually no, not these ones. I think I'd looked at, yeah, some other ones. But I reckon, yeah, these go back into the early um, like, or mid-1900s probably. And then World Famed Tooks and Eyes from Newey's by appointment. Took and Eve makers to Her Majesty the Queen and Queen Mary. 
There you go. So again, a stash of them, size one. I think they're all size ones. Yep, they're all, all the same. So that's a really sweet little, little collection. And then again, some newies, guaranteed rustless, made in England, gilt edged security. So there's some little ones there, and then we've got some some other ones, size zero zero zero, and then size zero zero and size one zero. So there's three different sizes in that. Plus this one makes four. And then we have the new snap fastener. So that's again newies. To locate correctly, use the guide hole. Guaranteed rustless. But yeah, it looks very, very old. So it'll be really interesting trying to research and place a time frame on this, which I'll include detail of that when I put these things in my little victory journal. So that container's broken in the bottom, but that all in for now. Um, then next up, and stay tuned at the end for the, the buttons. Um, if you love Mother of Pearl buttons, but stay tuned for a little surprise. So, I'll get those out. So we've got, oh yeah, these were the ones I looked and these are around from around the 1940s. These British Snap Guaranteed Rustless made in England. And so there's a big bag of those, again in different sizes, I think. Yep, size one. Size one, mostly size one by the looks of it. Oh no, size zero. So there's a, yeah, a good mix of, of those ones. And they're from the 1940s. And then we've got a mixed bag of goodies in here. I don't think I've actually even looked in this one. On one of those ones. Oh, a little bit of paper that says incomplete. Keep that. I keep it all. These are super old by the staining on them. Some of them have been torn into bits, possibly shared around. And then we've got some little needles. And amazingly, these needles do not, there's a tiny bit of rust on that big one. But then these other ones look like they're in near perfect condition, but I do think they are quite old, but they've probably just been stored well. So there's, I'll test them out, but potentially I've got myself an amazing stash of new, old, need, old new needles. You see, these don't look like they've ever been removed from their, their piece of fabric. And some more in here as well. So that's, that's a very handy. Put them back in. And then lots of little snaps. I'm wondering if this is someone that inherited someone else's stash as well. Um, if it ends up being quite, yeah, quite old in age. So again, these ones just don't look like they've been actually taken out of, um, out of their little sachets. Then we've got some needles and so these again um, some of these haven't even been um, opened I don't think. Let's have a look inside. Oh some of these are loose so this one unless on oh, these do have a little bit of um, tarnish on them you probably can't see it but there's a little bit of tarnish. But even if the needles aren't any good, I'm still going to include these little um, packets in my stitchery, haberdashery journal. I need to stop the needles slipping down. And I'll just stab myself. Just love how these little um, booklets go together. You just slip the piece of cardboard into it. So Golden Fleece, finest quality betweens needles, size seven, made in England. So we've got a few of those. And then we've got a Cruel Needles, size five, and between needles, size four. Oops, and there's another packet here, is there? Oh no, that's the same, same packet. So there's those ones. 
Um, then we've got some H. Millard and Sons needles, red itch, and they're cruel ones. So they're, they're in there. And then some gold seal needles, again, red itch made in England. This packet's obviously been well loved because it's lost its back. And then some number nine needles. Look at this, the iron arm. And I think these were the ones that I looked up some of these and they were from around 1910. And yeah, just a bunch of needles still in there. But just love the little cardboard um, packs. Some more of those. These ones. Cruel needles. An older pack that opens up that's had some needles taken out of it. But again, these ones aren't rusty. Oops, sorry, that's a bit of my winding card. Um, Millard and Sons. Gold seal. So most of those are still in there. They're a nice sized, nice sized needle. Nice robust needle. Nickel plated. Carpet sharps. I guess that might have been fermenting carpet or carpet bags. Straws, double century, double century egg eyed, made in England. Same ones. And then Kirby Beard, Royal Mills, egg eyed, cast steel, cruel, warranted, made at Redditch, England. And then Fordles, General Warehouse Men. Knitting pins in penny packets, best quality, and it's got a beautiful little peacock design on it. And these are marked as waistcoat rug needles. So have to look at what they are. But just love the packets, and there are definitely feel like there's needles inside. So it'll be interesting to see what state all of them are in. And then some more needles here, and some more darning needles from the iron arm there. That's the stash so far. Then we've got the Flora McDonald needle packet. How cute is this little packet? Over a century's reputation, Abel Morales celebrated needles. Oops. And then you've got a bit of fabric behind a bit of card with needles stuck in it. How cute. Just, just love all of this. Just so, so thrilled with this, um, yeah, this bundle of goodies. Would have been thrilled with probably one-tenth of the goodies um, for what I paid. Wartime package, pre-war quality, English lighthouse brand needles made in England. Manufactured from best Sheffield shield. Steel, sorry. <laughs> Can't speak. And then we've got Jazz Smith and Son Limited Egg Eye Sharps, number three, Ashwood Bank near Redditch. So this Redditch is a common place for a number of the brands that make needles. Millward's Gold Seal Needle. And then Berlin Wool Standard made in England. So that's beautiful. Again, it's just a little fold-out pack. The paper is just super, super soft. Okay, and there they are in there. They look like they might have a tiny bit of tarnishing to them. And then rust entirely prevented. These ones will be interested to, interesting to look at. Um, I'm actually curious. Let's have a look together, see if, it, if rust has been entirely prevented in these. doubt you could go back to the manufacturer at this point and, and complain but um, let's have a look it does look like there's no no rust present so I think we'll we'll give that one a, a resounding vote of approval Oops. now how to get it to fold back so I'm just gonna have to put it on the table and just shibby up the just move up those little little needles Oops. Can I get them to go back in the case? Ah, they just ended up all over my desk. This is when this felt mat comes into its own. Easy to pick them up off it. They haven't gone cascading down off the 
off the table. Actually, I think they meant to, they meant to go down in that section. Now I'm not so sure. All different sizes of needles. To their little little pack. There we go, and tuck that in. There we go. And then some more needles, H. Millard and Sons, Darners, and another lot of Darners, some more Jazz and Sons, some more Sharps, and some Chenille needles, London and can't read that, Bayless and Sun. So that's another brand. So that's our multitude of wonderful vintage needles. And yeah, some of those were from around the 1910 mark. Then I've got some more of the um, clips, hooks and eyes. La Poupe, trademark made in England. It's very falling apart packaging, so again speaks to the speaks to the age. Um, came with this little pin. I don't think it's a gold gold pin, but it's a nice little um, yeah wearable pin that you could attach something to the the front of or use in your um, citri journal. This one um, is a lovely. It's um, Morales. I can't quite tell whether this is squeeze. It looks like it should be squeezed, but it doesn't have enough letters in it. I don't think. Um, burnished egg eye needles and so it's got needles inside on a bit of fabric and then it's got a case where this actually bends back it's actually quite um, dirty or dusty at the back but presumably yeah you did that you bent it out and then it slides back in so it's got a hinge and it's got a patent on it an Able Morale Limited Redditch manufactured by but yeah just a lovely lovely little bit of vintage haberdashery and then a big hairpin or hair clippy thing. Um, not quite sure what this one's for. And then this would have been their grandmother's um, needle holder and it's still got a heap of needles in it and some of them look a little bit rusty so I'll have to go, go through that. But I think this will become a lovely little um, yeah needle holder for me to use or again just to put in my my vintage stitching journal now there's a range of thimbles all different sizes um most of them are the plasticky ones these could be um yeah i think they're probably plastic but it'll be interesting to just yeah check the materials on some of these whether these do make a different sort of sound than a than a pure plastic and then a nice metal one that's actually the perfect fit for my thumb so i might start trying to trying to use that it's um yeah got a nice metal lining and good good size for that so i'll probably keep that one out for me so put the thimbles back in Oops. A wealth of gorgeous things to include in my I'm definitely not short on vintage haberdashery now and then finally just so so thrilled with this I put these into a jar they just came in a plastic bag um, and I've counted them where's my, my little counting going gone while I was waiting um, waiting for a phone call I sat there and counted them um, 722 of the most gorgeous luminescent mother of pearl hand carved vintage buttons and they're all all different and some of them have got the yeah the different shell shell markings on them but they are yeah amazing and i was having a look online like on etsy i think someone's selling these ones for like 10 of them for 16 or 14 dollars or 16 dollars so um, if you were paying that sort of sort of price, that would be a thousand dollars in this this jar. 
um, for me, it's just going to be something lovely to be actually able to incorporate freely um, into my my work and to um, give, be able to give to others as well as a little little um, prezi for their slow stitching um, projects. But yeah, I'm going to keep this on my desk. I'll have to keep it out of the light. I'm not sure how these um, shells go if they get sort of sit in the light too long. But I do just love um, putting my my fingers into it, and um, I'll love including them in in my work they're just so 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 beautiful the colors that sort of yeah come off that luminescent surface and some of them have more sort of of the line detailing um, others have less less of that I could just sit here all day and just um, yeah look at look at them so I would love to know when these had originally been made and where they've where they've traveled and what they've seen along the way so yeah, what an amazing stash. So as I say, sort of even a portion of this would have made me incredibly thrilled, but I'm just, yeah, absolutely um, ecstatic about my collection of gorgeous, gorgeous goodies. And I'll honour them and I will, um, although I didn't know the lady that they're from and obviously the family, it wasn't something that they wanted to keep. Um, oh, and they also gave me an entire um, bag of fabric as well now they said oh you might need to need to wash it um, and there was also an, a passion in there um, but yeah a big bag of fabrics um, I won't get it all out some of them are just little pieces but even these pieces are great to use for slow stitch um, projects you can turn them into Suffolk puffs or, or yo-yos but then there were some big sections of fabric as well it's funny this this fabric I had this as my curtains when I was a kid. So my Nana um, had that fabric in her in her sewing room. My Nana, who was the, the dressmaker. So really nice fabrics in the mix as well. Um, there's a couple in there that are um, polyesters. And so if there's anything in the stash that I'm not going to use, I'll um, donate it to one of the op shops around here. But they just yeah, gave that to me when I was collecting the other stuff. They said, oh, we have a bag of um, fabrics. So we're going to throw them out. I said, oh, I'll, I'll take them. I'll, they said, oh, they might need a wash. So I said, sure, I'll do that. And um, I'll pass anything I can't use on to the, the local op shops. So that is my Thrifty Thursday. I'm thrilled with it. And I hope you enjoyed having a look at it with me as well. And as I start to um, start work, don't know when it will be, on my vintage haberdashery slow stitch journal um, we'll learn a bit more about the the pieces because i'll start researching them so i can include that detail in the journal itself take care everyone have a great thursday if you're watching it thursday hope your week's going well and i hope you're taking good care of yourselves bye everyone